Okay, guys, welcome back to another edition of Uncorked, and we have the world-renowned Jim Dunaway <laughs> with us as a special guest. We are in downtown Phoenix, and it is currently 11.55 p.m. on Pacific Monday. Pacific time. Yeah, Pacific time, so that would be 2 a.m., right? Right-ish. Yeah, central 2 a.m. minus 5 central time. We're tired. But we're having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell me what happened tonight. Final four, wasn't it? National championship. It was the final four. We were at the national championship game. And we are going to we have some stories to tell about that a little bit later on. And um, one of those stories being how I almost lost my pants at the game. And what? <laughs> We'll leave, we'll leave that as is until, until we answer a few questions. Okay, so there were a few people that asked the same. It wasn't worded the same, but it's, you know, they're trying to get to the same thing. Favorite sports memory you've witnessed? Michael Bradley and a few others asked this. I'll let you go first. Okay, uh, wow. I've witnessed so many. I feel like I've been asked this several times. I hope I give close to the same answers. Um, it can change over time. It can, but I've, I mean, I've been so, so blessed. Uh, Sid Bream safe at, at the plate to send the Braves to the World Series, one of the Braves' greatest moments. I was there and on the field before they'd even unpiled all the Braves from home plate from the dog pile, and I was doing interviews. And that then was, EG was on the bottom of the dog pile? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, she would have loved that, right? Because she's such a big Braves fan. So that was awesome. I mean, even even though I grew up an Alabama fan, the kick six. I mean, Sid Bream's an iconic moment. The kick six is an iconic moment. Tua to Devante is an iconic moment. I was at all three of those things. Alabama's first Final Four. Uh, Alabama's first Final Four. Auburn's first Final Four. I was at yeah. both of those things. Um, I saw Dale Jr. win the Pepsi 400 in Daytona right after his dad died, and I was there for the Daytona 500 oh, when wow. Dale died. Um, my goodness, I feel like I've seen it all. You have. You have yeah. seen it all. Yeah, some really, I mean, I'm not even touching, you know, I, the Van national championship in the 80s, uh, the 92. I've seen it all. Yeah, you've seen, it, seen all. it all. I think mine, covering wise, would have been the SEC championship this year, the basketball championship. I just, I have a emotional attachment to this team, or last year's team, I guess, right. now, because the season's over. But, they just had such great personalities, and they were so fun. And I loved hearing what they had to say in the locker room after the game, especially Chad Baker. He just was always full of energy. So that was probably my favorite moment just because I love all of those people so much. I haven't, on this side of things, I haven't witnessed a great Auburn basketball or Auburn football moment yet. Right, almost. I mean, that Iron Bowl win this year would have right, been Right, but I was I – was, I wasn't there. Oh, I didn't sorry. go. I so I'm, I'm speaking in person. But um, so I would say the SEC, SEC tournament. And I know, and what makes me sad is I feel like that's kind of overlooked now because of how the NCAA tournament went. I feel like people are forgetting just yeah. because how I feel like obviously the NCAA tournament's the bigger, the bigger thing. Yeah. But, but you know, you only cut down, there's only three times you can cut down the net. Yeah. But UConn did it tonight as we tape this for the yep. national championship. You cut down when you win your regional. Alabama got a chance to do that. So did UConn, Purdue, and, and North Carolina State. Yep. And then your conference championship. And Auburn got to do that. They did. I guess four. You can win your SEC regular season championship. I just think that the turnaround is so quick from conference, or I guess some of them end a little bit earlier than others, but the turnaround is so quick that it can get overlooked. And I feel like Auburn's success, and this is something that I'm having to remind myself. So I think that would be my favorite. And also because, I don't know, I just feel like I have a connection to this team. Or I had a connection to this past year's team. I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, I was there with you in Nashville. Yeah. I felt like I had a connection to that team. Yeah. I mean, their, their personalities were great. They were. You know, you and I covered basketball season all year. We did. And both of those locker rooms, Alabama and Auburn, were just great guys. They were. Just great guys. They were. Very entertaining. This depends. I don't – okay, this is from Jay Roberts. Tumors Lemonade or a Moe's Barbecue Bushwhacker on a hot day? Bushwhacker. 
100%. I wasn't really, I was never one to just go to Tumor's Corner and get lemonade and drink it. That wasn't ever really a activity that I did in Auburn. But I love, I think that Moe's has the best bushwhackers on the planet. Really? Yes. Because, well, I don't order them. I only really order them at Moe's because I know that I like them. But I've ordered them at Lake Martin before. And I didn't, I liked those. I didn't love them as much as Moe's. Um, I don't even know where I've ordered other ones, but I just think that those set the standard very high. And Flor I'm not a... Floribama, we've had them there. Oh, yes, I do like Floribamas, but I just don't go there as often. Yeah. But some of the bushwhackers, they don't do this at the Floribama one. I like it when they put, like, chocolate on the, the, oh, yeah. the cup before they put the bushwhacker yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that adds a little oomph to it. I like that. I don't that. think they do that at Moe's. Or at least not the Moe's in downtown Auburn. That didn't. They had too many people that they were trying to deal with. Yeah, I've never been a big fan of uh, the Tumors Lemonade either, but I'm a big fan of Tumors the Corner. Experience, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's 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 iconic. There's nothing like it. Right. It I've is only iconic. had the Lemonade once, yeah. but I, I like that it's there. I never want it to go away. It's, it's SEC football to me. Yeah, I just don't. I would never go out of my way to go to Tumor's Corner. I don't. I mean, I've had it before, but I've never made a trip for that. Right. But I like it. But I'm not. If I'm going to get a drink, I'm going to get a bushwhacker. I'm not going to get a couple lemonade. Yeah. But no. You know, like the varsity. There's one in Athens, Georgia. Yeah. You know, when I'm in places like that, the, the big, you know, steak and ribs place in Fayetteville, it just feels like the SEC, and that's what Tumor's is for me. So. Uh, yeah. Keep serving that lemonade, in my opinion. Okay, what I want to go to, and I don't know, I think that they've started doing this every year. You know the game, the basketball game that they play? At Tumors? Uh, yeah. yeah. I need to check that out. I don't know why this just reminded me of it, but I've never watched it in person. And I think it's kind of impossible to watch in person because it's not, there's no risers. Right. So it's just you're standing, and if the person in front of you is taller, then yeah, sorry. But it seems like a fun experience. Yeah. Maybe I'll go this year. But uh, Speaking of risers, um, you, she got to sit basically courtside at the yeah. national championship tonight. Three rows from the raised court. What was that like? Did, wait, did, I don't know what his name was, but did a Purdue, I think it was a Purdue player, fall off yeah. the entire court he did he rolled off i think or rolled off yeah. i said i tweeted about it because i was like i can't see but did he just tumble off because yeah. he flipped over a row of photographers and then yeah. after that i was like i can't tell where he landed yeah. he was fine at, but at that point you know you gotta you gotta just buy into i'm going off so you want to yeah. go ahead and go on off and don't just, just land on half the ground. go off you want to go on off you know <laughs> it's like you can't go to chimney rock and like Half jump off a of chimney rock. Yeah, you can't go to the middle one. You <laughs> got to go all the way up. And when you jump, you got to jump. You can't yeah. just like half jump. You're not going to make it off the rocks. Or you're not going to make it back up out of the That's water. That's right. That's right. Okay, Daniel asked, I think that people are very misunderstood with my Theo Vaughn fascination. I, I, I don't really know if I understand it totally. I mean, I understand you ex respect his game. I don't think you find him. I mean, he's not like. How can I phrase this? You don't think he's, like, hot, right? No, I don't find – I don't know. Like, if you were totally single and Theo Vaughn rolled in and asked you on a date, I mean, you may go just for the Theo Vaughn experience, but right. you wouldn't be like, oh, Theo Vaughn is so sexy. <laughs> right? No. Okay. Or, yes, you're right. No, okay. I wouldn't do that. I would go to dinner with him just for pure entertainment. That's right. That's right. But I think people are <laughs> – Guys, y'all are misunderstood. I don't have a, I don't have a crush on Theo Vaughn. I just love him because I. It's like someone loves an athlete because of the way they play, or someone loves an actor, or an actress because they think that they're a good actor, an actress, or a singer. You know, I love him because I think he's hilarious. I don't love him because I have feelings for him. Right. So, but the question was: date with Theo Vaughn or Auburn win a natty in basketball? So I'm not trying to go on a date with Theo Vaughn to begin with. I would love to have a meal with him just for him to be entertaining and funny but I'm not trying to I'm not trying to reach out to Theo Vaughn to date him so I would like to clear the air on that because I think a lot of people are very confused and that's not what's happening I just think he's funny yeah let's start a catchphrase right now okay when you finish a statement like that you can say that's uncorked that's uncorked <laughs> we've uncorked that rumor right there yes the rumor is debunked or yeah. uncorked like I um like, I just want to hang out with Zach Bryan and Bree Chicken Fry. Well, you had an option or an right. opportunity. Like, I'm not – like, she's coming – you know, 
she didn't come for his concerts in Birmingham. Nor she did didn't? I, she did not. You know she's going to be at Talladega. That's what I've heard. So we might run into her. We'd love to get her on Uncorked. <gasps> I think Bree she's... Bree Chicken Fry. I think she's uber talented. Like She is. She's I agree. fascinating to me just when she tells stories about dogs or drinking or where are my dogs at? Woof, woof, woof. I mean, everything that she and... <laughs> Everything they do is just funny as shit to me. I just love them. I think she's my Theo Vaughn. She might be. I, yeah. And I love Zach's music. And I love that they're together. Yeah. Yeah. You wanted I, them to run for president. Because I liked her before I liked, well, I liked her and I liked him. Separate. And then they got together. Yeah. And, and so now like, you just love them together. It's great. It's yeah, great. Yeah. It's fantastic. What could be better? Yeah. Question for you. Do you enjoy the format of the show now than you did do you enjoy it more now than you did on radio the format of the show oh a hundred percent because um <laughs> funny we're here in uh, phoenix and i saw our old programming guy from cumulus tonight he runs westwood one as part of cumulus who we used to work for his name is bruce gilbert he's a nice guy but he would come in and have meetings with us occasionally and basically tell me how to do my job. And, oh, um, and, and, and you know don't that. do that. And you know don't that ever do well. that. You know how that went over well. But I told him, I said, I, you know, I know I didn't handle it re- well when we were cussing at each other, but, but I, I, I learned some stuff from you, even at my advanced age. So, so we talked about it. So and you had this conversation tonight. Oh yeah. Tonight in the tunnel, pregame. In the, in the tunnel, yep. He was walking out. I was like, dude, imagine seeing you here. He's like, are you still in town? I thought you'd leave with Alabama. I said, nope. We're here yeah. for the long haul. No, but I do love our format now. Um, and I love the fact that, you know, we were talking about this today. When Nick Saban retired, we just said, to hell with it. We're going to stay on until we're not on anymore. Yeah, for and, hours yeah. and hours and hours. And then we were like, I'm just going to spend the night up there. And we're just going to put up three cameras, and I'm going to live up there. And yeah. we did it. And, you know, just to be able to do things like that, I love it. Yeah. I love to, on things like this, uncorked and bam and bourbon. I love that when we got back from Pasadena, you said, Dunaway, you and me, we're going to cover basketball this year. And look where like we are. Like we've never covered it before. And we, are, we wrote it all the way to the national championship yeah. game. No one, thought, no one thought this would happen. That's right. All the all the wine later. Yeah, and, uh, all the wine later. Great basketball season. Yeah, it, it was. It has been my favorite basketball season of all it time. It has been so fun. Yeah. I'm so sad that it's over. Which host is scariest? When I think of a host, I think of the three of y'all. I think of you. I think of Brown. I think of Lance. And then I think of Rockstar as the fourth host or fourth personality. None of y'all have ever scared me, I would say. I've never scared you. No. You've scared me. I'm aware. <laughs> I'm aware. But no, none of y'all have scared me. I can. I think that I have a good feel now for when y'all are frustrated or I should just stay away and not ask questions. Yeah. But see, you've got to realize when, when you were hired, you became the youngest person that's ever worked for us. Right. So we, at that point, were like big brothers or whatever we were going to defend i mean little t could do no wrong and there were days it bothered me i was like this girl we got it we got to tell her if she does something wrong wait she what did i do wrong that y'all didn't tell me nothing because i can't bring up anything you do wrong because they're <laughs> yes, like yes you can she's the best she's you know jim you're wrong she's the best no please tell me what i did <laughs> no, wrong you didn't do anything wrong because I will... You did not do anything wrong. I but, like constructive criticism. But we we were like, we just think she hung the moon. And we defend <laughs> I her. I did not. We defend her all the time. Y'all do. Y'all do defend yeah. me. Y'all protect me. And I appreciate and, that. You know, sometimes, I mean, we've all got daughters. So sometimes it's fatherly. Sometimes it's brotherly. Uh, and all the time it's just teammates. But we defend <laughs> the shit out of you. Y'all do. To everybody. To everybody. <laughs> Y'all and, do. Uh, I'm grateful. So, I mean, EG, she sort of, when she came in, she became then the youngest person in our group. And um, I don't know if we gave her the same type of defense. She's We've sort of thrown her in the deep end. She's like the the last kid, you know? Yeah. You, you, you look out for one, and the next one's like, 
Uh, good luck. Here's yeah. some hand-me-downs. Right. Good luck, E.G. Go, but, go to the Texas-Alabama game your first week with the gear by yourself. With no wagon. Yeah, with no whatever. wagon. Just carry it around. Yeah, yeah, and let us know how it goes. Yeah. Meanwhile, we'd have had, we'd have had seven people carrying the equipment for you. No. Back in the early days. No, no but do you? I don't think that y'all are scary. I think that you show the most frustration when there is frustration. But I also show the most happiness. You do. Yeah. You do. You're the high. You can get the highest, and you can get the lowest. Yep. I'm like that. Uh, that cartoon uh, movie with all the moods, the emotions. No, you're like the. My uh, head blows up, and then I'm the hugger. I'm the. I'm the. I'm all the cartoon characters. You're the doctor's office when you're a little kid, and you go in. There's. They say, "Show me how you feel." Yeah. And it's ten faces, yep. and the one's really, really happy, and the other one's sobbing, crying. Yeah. But I feel like you're just like the first two and the last two. And then there's like one in the middle. It's not all ten. It's yeah. just like. Yeah. We found out, though, that if I'm medicated, I hit the middle. That's the only yeah. time I'm a five. <laughs> yeah. Or a ten. Yeah. Or not the only time that you're a ten, but I it ju- can make I just, you a ten. I, you know, I grew up basically by myself. So. Wait, don't make me. Don't depress me. I write all these emotions. And I yeah. love to share them. I'm a sharer. Yeah. I, oh, I tell yeah. everybody about everything. Yes. Which isn't a bad thing yeah. sometimes. It helps fill the show up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, forks up. <laughs> There's our friend. But who who scares you out of? Nobody scares me. Or not scares you, but who makes you the most? Oh, God. Oh, God. I think, I think, I mean, I know I do that to people. I mean, there are days Lance does it to people, and I think even in his own way, Brown does it to people. I mean, just to cue you guys in, 8.15 in the morning, and I don't care what morning it is, 8.15 in the morning, Brown's going to walk into that damn office. He's going to be whistling. He's going to say, hey, how's it going? Hey, Jim, how's it going? And and he's just so damn happy. Fantastic. And that's what I do. I, I angrily say fantastic every angrily. time. Angrily. Yeah. Because when you hear fantastic for me, I am usually not fantastic. That's my that's my fake happy word is fantastic. How did it go today? Fantastic. So what do you say when you are happy? Uh, I usually you can just tell. I don't have to say anything. So Brown comes in, and I sometimes I think it's fake whistling. I'll call it. I think it's fake whistling sometimes. I don't know where this whistling thing came from. I don't really hear him whistle. You don't hear him whistle? I mean, I'm the first. Hey, Jimbo, what's up, man? <laughs> How's it going? Jimmy D, what's up? <laughs> I don't. Dude, it's 815. Just, just doing show notes. You're, Fantastic. No, you're, just doing show notes. <laughs> no, that's a word. <laughs> I have so many things just I can to, say right just now. Just trying to get the show ready. I I'm have doing. so many things I could say right say now. Say it. Say it. I can take it. No, no. Okay. Well, first of all, I don't, I think that I'm 99% of the time the first one that interacts with Brown when he walks in because I sit oh, 100%. You're by in the, the door. front door. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard him whistle. He is always happy, which I appreciate. I would rather him come in happy than someone come in every day and be like, yeah, but give me give me some variety. I don't want it to be sunny every day. I need it yeah. to rain occasionally. Yeah, but still, I don't know. It seems so unreal sometimes. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I just think that period. It's it's good to be around positive people, I would say. And no, but I was going to say about about you is <laughs> It's the best one. <laughs> I think I'll we know ask. what's happening now, right? What? I think we know what's happening. Oh, we're back to me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh. Um, it's the best when I'll ask a question where I'll say, okay, I saw this. Do you want a graph or a stat or whatever? Or I'll say something earlier in the morning. And it's before I'm there. So I'm texting. And you'll answer and you'll say, okay, well, I'm just going to get back to my show notes now, a.k.a. Yeah. <laughs> shut the hell up and no, let me no, keep no. working. Well, I mean, if it's – I there's a certain amount of comfort I've got to have before the show starts. Yeah, but you can also just not answer my text. I know, but I, you're a little T. I cannot not answer your text. When have that – no, you cannot answer whenever you feel like you have something else no, to do, no, just like no. everyone I'll, else I'll does. always answer your text, little T. I appreciate it, but – Okay. 
<laughs> but it, no. You are one of the few people that if I've got to do show notes, that I take a break to answer. But you text. don't have to. I appreciate I that, I but you don't have, have to. to. Instead, you just text me and say, let we're, me just get back to my show we're, now. We're the social social media committee. We are the social media. And you're the chairman, so i gotta, I got to answer your text. <laughs> we are the committee. Oh, well, i got to tell you guys real quick. Um, I send a, and I can pull up my phone right now and just show you day after day after day after day. We started it about, I want to say two months ago. She said it would be helpful when I send out the guests if you just gave me two, three, four topics that you know are going to be in the show, right? So every day before I leave home, usually the first thing I do before I get up, before I get in the shower or anything, I, you know, or sometimes the night before, I send, you know, dash, a headline, then return, dash, headline, dash, headline, dash. I think headline. I know where this is going. Yeah. So one day... I my phone wasn't around me and I did it on the iPad and I'm old I don't know how things work and so I put Alabama starts practice at the Sweet 16 was going to be the first headline because I knew we were going to talk about that in there's a, there's more and then I hit return to go to the second line but on the iPad it sent it to little T and she thought I was talking shit <laughs> Because, yeah, because why wouldn't I think that? You, yes, that is it. If she thought I was just texting her because Auburn got eliminated, that I was just texting, hey, good morning. Alabama starts practice for the Sweet 16 and today. And you wouldn't do that? Ooh, no, I wouldn't do that. Bullshit. <laughs> yes, it was, we were talking about we had a change in our schedule. Something that we had planned on doing one day was changed, and... I was so my emotions were raw. I had to get myself together after the loss. I covered the Alabama game, much to I mean, everyone thought that our coverage was just going to go dead because I was the only one in Spokane, and they were like Auburn lost, so nothing else is going to happen. I, I had a whole prep. Pe- I, had a, I had a whole pep talk ready to go well, to get forks up to, <laughs> to get you ready to go cover Alabama. I didn't even have to use the pep talk. No, because you were ready I'm to a go. professional. You're a pro. You're a pro. I think it was the next day, Brown texted us and said, hey, we have a schedule change. Is everyone available to do this instead of whatever day it was supposed to be, April, whatever? And you responded and said, yeah, that should be fine because we won't have to leave to cover Alabama in the Final Four until whatever day. And then I was just like, I was, I was shaking. I was furious after the Auburn game. I wasn't pissed off when Alabama won. I was pissed off because Auburn lost. And so that started it. But but they did end up making it to the final Yeah, but four. you know. You knew exactly. Do not <laughs> act day, like. That do day, not that, act. that was a smack talk. Yeah. That I'm very aware. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then the next morning when I get a text that literally says nothing other than Alabama starts practice for the Sweet 16 today. What else am I supposed to think? But it does come at that time of day every day, and it starts with a little dash, and that had the dash. Yeah, but typically it has more than one sentence, and when Alabama starts Sweet 16 practice today is the only sentence. What else? And I was just seeing red. I was like, (laughs) I could kill you. (laughs) If I was in Birmingham, we would have gotten in an all-out brawl. Uh, Yeah, yeah. But I wasn't. But continue what you were saying. No, no. I... um, I enjoy <laughs> the rivalry, the ebbs and flows of our friendship. <laughs> yeah, but then it always ends up like we're laughing and we're oh, having I know, fun. I know, I know. Yeah, so it's and everybody good. thinks I'm this big bammer and you're this big barner, but well, really, we are. <laughs> <laughs> They're not misunderstood. <laughs> oh, but hey, I, I love Auburn too. Yeah, you love Stephen and Bruce. Oh, I do love Stephen Pearl. Absolutely. He's the greatest. He's the best. Yeah. He is the greatest. I don't know Bruce as well just because we had Steven on the show so yeah, much. Man, I love Shelly and Kirk Sampson. I mean, yeah, I can name a hundred awesome. people I love at Auburn. Thank you. Can you name a hundred people you love at Alabama? I don't know a hundred people, but the people that I do know that work there have been nothing but kind to me and yeah. have Steven always been. He's yes, been he's awesome. They all are awesome. Ryan Passing. Yes, yes. He and Chris, they'll met. They're they have a little bit of UNO. They'll <laughs> mess with me, 
But yes, they've all been nothing but kind. And when I'm on my own doing stuff, they always check in. But a rivalry is a rivalry. Who's been uh, an engineer since, I want to say, the early 80s. And he, he appreciates a good rivalry. What did he tell you? Oh, I the first thing, we're at the Alabama Team Hotel Friday. Was that Friday night? Yeah, at the Final Four. Yeah, so three days ago. And I <laughs> am just innocently smiling around the team lobby, you know, just happy that I'm here. Tom Stipe walks up. So what time does Auburn play tomorrow? <laughs> I was like, Really? I was like, I am here with a smile on my face, thrilled to cover your team, and this is how this – I turned around and walked two steps away, and then I turned around and laughed. But, yeah, everyone can appreciate the fandom and the rivalry. But when we went to dinner in L.A., I promise you, Tom and then Chris and Brian chimed in, but Tom started, he said, because he listens to our show all the time. He says, uh, every fan – this was his quote. We're at, we're at a rest- an Italian restaurant that was – it's the oldest one in Hollywood. 1919. Important details. And we're sitting there in this iconic place, and we're drinking wine at the time. And he goes, as he raises his glass, he says, every fan, he goes, every fan should, oh, I just stained the freaking couch. Um, we should probably clean Turn that, that cushion over when we're done. Every fan should be like Taylor Korn, is what he said. Thank you, Tom Stein. I wish every fan was like Taylor Korn. They love their team as much as she loves their team. It's a double-edged, double-edged sword. Is that the saying? We're gonna have to take a picture of this and drop it into this part of the podcast right now to show what yeah, I just did to this yeah, couch. Yeah, we can do that. It's a double-bladed knife, or what's double that saying? Sword. Yeah, like it's great when it's great. And when it's awful, it's really, really awful. Because my emotions, I ride the wave. But, yeah, it's – I love Auburn a lot. And sometimes it hurts a lot. How much do you think this couch costs? Probably a lot of money. <laughs> just so, charge it? Just bill it to my room? No, just don't say anything. we got to flip the cushion over when we We just leave. walk up. We just stand up and walk away. Okay, but – Let's talk about our day today. Should we do it in chronological order? Okay. I got up really early, walked to Fan Fest, three blocks that way, and did the show for three hours. Looked really good on television, <laughs> on our stream, on our platform. But from behind the scenes, I'm, I'm set up on a garbage can with some homeless person's small box. And I've got my laptop on top of that to get it to eye level because I didn't have chairs. And people kept walking by. They were like, you know, Radio Rose is on the second floor, all the national and local radio You're stations. Like, oh, that's not where I was I'm... like, I don't do radio. I'm a, I'm a streaming service, digital platform, and we're <laughs> going to be outside right here on this garbage can. <laughs> and all the security people were watching me. They're they were have like, a close what the, hell? What the hell is he doing? <laughs> what is this man doing yeah. outside? And that gets us to about 8.30 in the morning. Where about were you? 8.30 in the morning, I... I did the first half of the show just from the hotel room, and I decided I should get outside. I was like, I need some fresh air. I just need to – because when we're at the games, we're inside, and it's a time warp because you, there's no daylight. It's not like there are windows on the – you know. Especially at the SEC tournament. Yes. Yeah, so it's you're inside, and then you walk outside, and you're like, is it daylight? Is it nighttime? It's like walking out of a movie where it's so dark in there and it's not dark but you just walk outside and you're like i don't even know what time of day it is or where i I am i thought it was nighttime right so i said i'm just gonna go sit outside for a little i said it's 8 30 in the morning and there's not gonna be anyone at the pool and i knew there were some tables and chairs out there so i said i'm just gonna pack up my backpack i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna have the place to myself and it's gonna be great so i walked out there and i was the only one out there for 10 minutes probably and out walks no other than the Yale basketball coach who knocked Auburn out of the tournament Yale so it's just me and me and him you and the guy that that crushed my heart yeah crushed your madness yeah you and him are the only people that I have to blame but so it was just us hanging out by the pool he was on a phone call with his airpods in I would have talked to him, but he seemed like he was doing something important. So it's just us chilling by the pool at 8.30. Um, and then we we regroup. We 
Oh, we get in the car, the self-driving car. Self-driving car is the highlight of the day. It was the craziest thing that I've ever experienced in my life, I think. You can see it on our platform over on Twitter. Yes. And YouTube or just Twitter? Not YouTube. Twitter, Facebook. But you literally just you download the Waymo, 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 Waymo app and a car will just arrive you know you say i want to be picked up and taken up i want to be picked up here taken wherever and it'll tell you where to walk for the car to arrive so this car pulls up and, and it is empty it's the weirdest feeling because we know what they look like because they got sensors around them and yeah this thing on the top including a ribbon board but you know nobody's in it because we've been seeing them all over town this is a test market for it and then Taylor's looking one way, I'm looking one way, and then here, way down the road, we see it turn onto our street, and we're like, yeah. here we go. somebody in that car, it's coming it's, to us. It's free, it is freaky. It, it wasn't is. as freaky being inside of it, but seeing them drive down the road, and there's no one in the driver's seat, it's just a vehicle yeah. maneuvering around. To see a car around. turn, knowing it's coming for With us. With a blinker on. Yeah, oh, a blinker every turn. Yeah. Lane change, it's perfect, it's a perfect driver. It is, it is, and so, we get in the car you a little thing pops up on your phone and Tell them how they knew how you knew it was our car oh yeah there's a ribbon Board. little yeah, circle thing, thing on top of the car and it will say your like mine said tk so we approach the car the car stops i get a thing on my phone that says unlock so we unlock the car get in and then there's just a little tablet screen type thing which i didn't know about the unlock thing but that makes sense because anybody could just get when in. stop at the stop sign could just get in yeah. yeah you have to click something on your phone it sends you a notification and so we get in you just click start ride it starts talking to you and it drives flawlessly flawlessly it's smoother than a typical driver i would say yeah, really good on the brakes. Yeah, it's not start, stop, start, stop, car sick, yeah. throw up, vomit. It felt it's, a little bit like a Disney ride. Like it, it was very yeah. smooth. It used blinkers. It did, was not scary at all. Did not hit people in the crosswalk? No, we, it we had, hit no one. We had people crosswalk. We had a little construction. It moved over. One lane was closed. It moved over a lane. Yeah, it, it can, it can change crap. lanes. It can. It, it's insane. It was crazy. I'd never been in one of those before. Me either. But it was, I would do it again. I know. I didn't want to, she says, where do you want to go? You want to take it to the stadium? And I was like, no, I don't want to go on the interstate with it. And then mm-hmm. then we just went a short distance to Matt's Big Breakfast, shout out. Um, <laughs> and then when we got out of it, I was like, dang, I wish it could take us all the way to Glendale. Yeah. And, and the beauty behind it is you don't have to talk to anyone. Not at all. You don't have to do the Uber small talk, which a lot of times I just don't participate but, you know, in. We could have said turn on the radio and picked a genre. Yeah, it we does could that. Have. We didn't do that. We could have. Yeah. But it was a great experience, and I would do it again. I felt very safe. Me too. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. So we get to the stadium. I have my first nosebleed. Not important. <laughs> we do a lot of stuff. And then the, uh, then the thing happened. Then the game ends. The game ends. And. Confetti's falling. Confetti's falling. It's not the only thing. Yeah, that's not the only thing. And I stay out on the court for a while. Dunaway goes to the little walkway to get the uh, Purdue players leaving the court. And after a while, they do a million different things. They give I was out there. They gave the trophy, all that. And then it's just basically the players, and I think their families may have been out there. They're all just hanging out on the court. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go run to the bathroom and then wait out in the little walkway for them to walk off the court with the trophy. They're all going to be thrilled, excited. So we're standing out there. We're standing out there. We're standing out there. It was taking forever. And I looked at Dunaway and I was like, okay, if they're still out there celebrating, I'm going to run to the bathroom really quick before they walk back to go to the locker room. So I walked back there. I went back to the locker room just in case. And I don't know how many minutes later it was. Probably... A lot. It felt like two hours to me. And I texted. So I had a wardrobe malfunction in the bathroom. And so I will complete this end of the story after. But I texted Dunaway because I was like, he's probably thinks that I have vanished or have been kidnapped or something. And because it had been forever. And so I texted him and I said, major wardrobe malfunction. No context. That's all I said. So I go into panic mode. Yeah. You talk about your mindset right now. Because I get major. What was it? Major. 
wardrobe malfunction. Is that what it was? I th yeah, I said major war. Oh, I said I'm coming. Major wardrobe malfunction. And I was like, last I knew, she was up on the race court with God and everybody <laughs> watching her in confetti. And I'm thinking to myself, oh no, she's had a major wardrobe malfunction on the court uh, <laughs> in the middle of one shining moment on the court. <laughs> Literally one shining moment. I'm yeah. thinking. So I text her back instantly, oh my, can I bring you a towel? I was yeah. trying to think of something, and she's not responding. So I start going up on the court, and I'm walking around. People like Chris from Indianapolis like, hey, Jim. And I'm like, I don't have time. Uh, have you seen my coworker, Taylor? No, I haven't. I, and I'm looking, confetti's everywhere. <laughs> Cheerleaders are throwing confetti on each other, taking Instagram. And I'm looking through them, walking in their shots, <laughs> looking for Taylor because I think She's had a major wardrobe malfunction. On the she, court. She's hiding under the table or something. And tell them about yeah. your Twitter search. What else? Your Twitter search. Uh, <laughs> so at this point, I can't find her. And nobody's seen her. So I'm like, well, if she's had a, I mean, there's a million cameras. If she's had the, a major wardrobe malfunction, I instantly go hashtag final four wardrobe malfunction on Twitter to see if it pops up. Nothing. So then I, go, then I go hashtag final four girl because I thought maybe that would be what it was under. Nothing. So I was like, well, thank God she's not trending. Yeah, not yet at least. Yeah. But so, she was in the bathroom. Yes. So I, I had ran to the bathroom. I was like, I'm going to go really quick before they walk off the court. And the zipper on my shorts just busts. It breaks. It's disconnected. It and is no longer functional. It is. It doesn't function. And so I am in the bathroom for, I don't know how long it actually was, but it was probably 15 minutes trying to reconstruct the zipper of my shorts because I was like, I have to walk out of the stadium at some point and my pants are broken. So it was less stressful because it was Yukon and Purdue. So if I couldn't have ever returned it wouldn't have been as big of a deal as it would have been if it was Alabama or Auburn playing for a national championship but I probably have blisters on my fingers from trying to get the zipper back together for so long and at one point a security or an employee a helper of State Farm Stadium walks in and says hey are you okay and I thought at this point, I was like, I'm the only one in here. The game's been over for an hour, and I'm still trying to get my pants to work. <laughs> and so I go, yes. And they said, can we help you? And I said, uh, I don't think so. I then realized that there's a, another human being in the bathroom laying on the floor. They're not talking to me. No one is concerned about me and my broken zipper. It was a girl that thought that she had food poisoning. So I guess she's been vomiting, and someone walked in, saw her throwing up, and then walked out and told security, hey, there's a sick human in there and so they're not talking to me at all and i was like oh my god don't waste that security and it's just my just zipper's broken though. and so this girl just says i think i have food poisoning and they were like well can we help you and you know they're worried and she's like who's they and they're like security is worried they sent us in here so it wasn't me after all. And I didn't know how to say, yes, I kind of need help. Can you bring me a pair of basketball shorts? <laughs> I don't know what to I put on. I was offering a towel. Yes. Yeah. But it ended up being, there was a little clip. Any girl knows that there's a little clip a lot of times at the top of a skirt or shorts or a dress that is it supplementary to the zipper. And I had a long jacket on and my backpack. So I was able to just clip the top of it. And then put my jacket on, put my backpack on. And then I, we went into the locker room, <laughs> did interviews in the whole time. Because I walked out and I was like, don't I? I was like, my pants just broke. And he said, do, do you need to leave? Like, what's going on? I said, no, I think I'm fine right now. So we got into the locker room and I'm just standing. I'm not moving much. I'm just standing very stiff and I'm trying to stay so still. And I said, let's just get one player interview and then let's get out of here because I have to. I have to get a different pair of pants on before yeah. something horrible happens. Ironically, and we interviewed Donovan Klingman, and thank God her shorts were clinging to the man over here. She was Klingman. Klingum. Oh, is that his name? Yes. <laughs> the wine. But, That's why it's uncorked. But, but it is uncorked. But. In the middle of the interview, my phone ran out of storage, so we go. 
from the court do my pants breaking pull it together not quickly in about a 20 minute span into the locker room my phone runs out of storage so we leave and then Dunaway has a nosebleed and then we just decide that we should probably leave yeah. Barkley invited us to an after yes. party Barkley did invite us to come get a drink with him after the game and then after my pants malfunctioned Dunaway was like do you want to go and I was like I can't I was yeah. like, I have to go back to the hotel and get a different pair of pants on because if I'm sitting with the TNT crew and yeah, that's we just... did learn earlier in the day though that your your shorts matched your skin color. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is after the security guard at the entrance of the stadium looked at me and said, "Your shorts really blend in with the color of your skin," and I thought that you just weren't wearing pants, and I was like. <laughs> Fast forward, and it was almost true. <laughs> yeah, fast forward, and I almost wasn't wearing pants. <laughs> but, yeah, so it was an interesting day, to say the least. But So many memories this uh, year. So many memories. But it was funny because it was okay because it was UConn and Purdue. Obviously, we wanted to get everything that we could have out of it, but I would have been a lot more stressed out if it was – Alabama or Auburn had just won a national championship and my pants were broken. I know you. You'd have thrown that towel on and we'd get all the content we need. I would have. That's when I when they would have said, are you okay? And they were really talking to the food poisoning girl. I would have said, no, I'm not. I need a pair of pants. Any pants that you can find, just give them to me. And I would Lost have been, and found. Yes, I would have been in the locker room in like game worn. <laughs> you know, the runner up. I would have been in a pair of jersey shorts. But that's why you're the queen of content. You're the best. I try. But, yeah, we had an interesting afternoon, to say yeah. the least. And a great season. A I, great we, season. We didn't get to do it. I do would love, I would love to sit down and uh, at some point go back to our highlights of the year, some of the things we enjoyed. We can do that. Like Before, that we, we have... almost got hit by a truck, and I calmly saved us. <gasps> oh, yes, you did very calmly save us. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do that soon. When? We don't Whenever know. we have time. Not tonight. But they're no. out of wine. And... Um, I think it's like two o'clock in the morning. Pacific time. Yeah, so for we have to be awake in one gotta, hour to board the plane. Yeah, I got to be on the show here in a few minutes. Oh shoot! Like. Yeah, okay, guys, thank you for joining us. If you have questions, you can go ahead and comment them here, and we will do a best of basketball season. We were supposed to do it the other night, got a little sidetracked. It happens to the best of us. It does. But. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. We will both greatly appreciate it if you do that. And until next time.